I'm here with Alexander Merkurs, Editor-in-Chief of the Duran. Alexander, let's talk about Matteo Salvini and Italy. A lot of action coming out of Italy recently. We have the uh, migrant boat that Salvini has denied access uh, to Italy. We have a, a little uh, war of words between Salvini and Richard Gere. This is all, I think, a little bit of the sideshow. The the big news about Italy is the fact that they, it looks like they'll be heading into elections, but it has not been confirmed yet. What's the story out of Italy right now, Alexander? Right. Now, I think the thing to understand is that Salvini's Northern League has been in this very unhappy alliance with the Five Star Movement since the elections that happened in Italy um, um, just over a year ago. Now, when those elections have happened and when this coalition government emerged, I predicted that it would un be unhappy and that it wouldn't last very long because the uh, Five Star Movement is a left wing party. Uh, Salvini's Northern League is basically a right wing party. Um, and they never look like a very happy match. What has happened since is that it's become increasingly clear that Salvini is by miles the big personality in this government. Now, this has been so, despite the fact that in that election, the Five Star League won over 30% of the vote, and Salvini's party won only 18% of the vote. So he was supposed to be the junior partner in this coalition. He was supposed to be the person who would you know, take a, a, a ministerial post whilst the prime minister, who's a man called Conte, would, would be more aligned with the Five Star Movement. And that hasn't really worked because Conte is essentially the invisible man. Barely anybody pays much attention to him. Salvini has been the dominant force. The Five Star Movement have been very jealous of Salvini and Salvini's rise, and they've been trying to sort of box him in. And so, by the way, has the Italian presidency. Uh, uh, the president, President Mattarella, is a fervid Europeanist, <laughs> and he has been quietly manoeuvring with Conte, the prime minister, and with the finance minister, who is also closer to the Five Star Movement, to try to rein Salvini in. Now, the result is that Salvini has not been able to do many of the things that he wants to do. He's not been able to cut taxes in the way that he wants to do, which would involve running a deficit. He's not been able to take many, carry out many of the business reforms that he wants. But he's also struck a massive chord with the Italian public. So where in the election that happened, his party only got 18% of the vote, they're now polling around 40%. And the Five Star Movement has seen its vote collapsed. And from over 30%, it's now they who are polling around 18%. So Salvini says, you know, why should I continue with this very unsatisfactory arrangement so he's trying to collapse the government, trying to get early elections. Um, if he wins those elections with anything like 40 percent of the vote, he might just be able to form a single party government in Italy, which would be quite an amazing thing. Or if he can't, there are various right wing parties which look like a more um, suitable coalition partner for him than the Five Star League would be. And at that point, he would finally be the prime minister of Italy, the undisputed leader of Italy, and the man who'd be able to do the th sort of things that he wants to do, and which he thinks are necessary in order to end this effective recession that Italy has been locked into ever since the early 2000s, shortly after it joined the euro. So it's understandable why um, Salvini is trying to collapse this government by um, ending the coalition and by essentially calling for a no vote of confidence in his own government. You can see what he's doing. But I have to say also, it is a bit of a gamble. Because in Italy, politics are not just electoral, they're also conspiratorial. 
and the maybe there's already talk of postponing the election until next year in the hope that by then Salvini will have lost some of the momentum which he appears to have at the moment. What would happen if Salvini does manage to get 40 percent plus and, and can actually form a, a majority government? I mean, he's going to to be a massive, massive yeah. headache for the well, EU and, and the elite in Brussels and, and Salvini coupled with Orban, who also has a strong mandate. I mean, you're looking yeah. at a one two punch that. Uh, wow. Yes. I mean, it's going to just be it'll, it'll be fun to watch. Well, it'll be fun to watch because, I mean, the thing to always say, and it's a point I've, we, you know, we've been making many times in our programs. I mean, Orban may be a big personality, but Hungary is a small country. Italy is a big country in EU terms. It's got a big population, I think something like 60 million people. And it's got Europe's second biggest industrial base after Germany. It's got a bigger industrial base than France. So we are talking about a big country. It also, by the way, holds a huge amount of German debt, the, the, you know, the, the, the debt that Germany and other countries have loaned. So if you have a forceful personality leading Italy, then that changes completely the political balance. And, you know, there can be all kinds of stories, there can be all kinds of ideas about suspending the voting rights of countries like, you know, Hungary or Poland in the EU Council. Doing that to Italy would be a dramatic thing. I think it would create an existential crisis for the EU. So it would mean that you have um, an anti-integrationist Eurosceptic at the heart of the EU project. And um, that would be most most extraordinary. Now, of course, it has to come with the caveat, which is that Salvini has said many things, has said he wants to do many things. He's not done them. And he's been able to blame the Five Star League for them. If he becomes prime minister as head of a majority government, then, of course, he won't be able to hide behind the excuse of the Five Star League for any future failure to do the sort of things that he says he wants to do. So it, it, it would be a challenge to Salvini also, but it's a challenge he seems to relish. And we'll see whether he really is the man that he is building himself up to be. Yeah, judging by the way he handled the, the whole Richard Gere thing and the way he's handled the migrant boats, I think Salvini is definitely up for the challenge. I mean, the guy's, well, got, I, the guy's got balls, there's no doubt about it. Well, actually, he's, he's also very, very, very quick and very quick-witted. I mean, he's obviously, as, uh, he's obviously got a, you know, a good connection with the Italian people who, by the way, had, have been through a great deal. I mean, they've suffered a lot over the last um, um, t 20 years. You know, the years since the euro was introduced. So he's he's captured the imagination of a lot of people in Italy. He's a very, very, very skillful politician. I don't think that he's going to uh, prove a walkover um, at all. I think he will be a, a strong leader. But of course, you know, I have to say yeah. that, you know, after after we saw what happened with Tsipras, I don't think he's anything. <laughs> I think he's anything like Tsipras, by the way. Like Tsipras, yeah. Uh, you know, but you know, but you know, one has to always add that warning that, as I said, it'll be a challenge to him that he will meet. I think he's up for it too. S saying, I, I right, saying that, I, I'm sure the EU saw Tsipras and they knew that they could that they could compromise him, that they could bring him yeah. under the fold, and it was fairly yeah. easy for them to do it. I think the EU clearly knew that Tsipras was going to be no problem. He was going to be easy right. to walk over. Yes. I think the EU, they know that Salvini, it's going to be impossible to walk over him. So well, I would say, Alexander, that Salvini should watch his back because the EU, knowing how sneaky they yeah. are, they're yeah. going to pull everything they can, all the rotten, disgusting tactics that they've used over and over again, whether it's Brexit, whether it's what happened in Austria, yeah, uh, they'll use every tactic they can to derail, slander, smear 
Salvini, correct? Yes, absolutely. The only thing I would say is he's never been affected by any of this. I mean, we, we were talking a few weeks ago, not a few days ago, I think, in fact, about this scandal that's been worked up in Italy about, uh, around one member of uh, Salvini's parties who, party who's supposed to have had a meeting in, I think, in Moscow with some Russian people about attracting money. And again, it doesn't really look like it's anything. The Italian people have been completely unmoved by it. So he seems to know how to respond to these smears. And the Italian people seem to know how to yeah, how to work through them, how to see through them. The bigger concern, in my opinion, is not the smears. It's that things like switching off access to Italian banks, creating a banking run in Italy, and manipulating the Italian presidency. The Italian president was able to block Salvini's choice for finance minister. Um, some years ago, back in 2011, the Italian presidency was used to remove another Italian prime minister, who was Silvia Berlusconi. Not, I think, anywhere near Salvini's ability, but nonetheless, he was removed from office because the EU plotted with the then Italian president to remove him and to install a technical government in his place. So there are all kinds of things he's got to do. And when you say that he's got to watch his back, you're absolutely right. But then no one does, an in does intrigue like an Italian. So maybe Salvini is up to the, uh, is up to the uh, understands these kind of tricks. Yeah, I'm sure he understands it. I'm sure he's up to the task. But yeah, he's got it. Be very, very careful, very, very concerned, very because the EU is going to be gunning for him. No doubt Absolutely. about it. Absolutely. All Absolutely. Right. No question about it. Alexander McCurse, Editor-in-Chief of the Duran. Thank you very much. Guys, if you like this video, click on the subscribe button down below. Click on the notifications bell to make sure you get notifications every time we push out a new video. And you can get an audio copy of this video. Follow us on iTunes and on SoundCloud as well. And you can also help the Duran by donating to the Duran. PayPal, Patreon, and subscribe star. The links are in the description box down below, and it really helps this channel out a lot. And another thing that helps this channel out a whole lot is when you go to the Duran shop and pick up some merchandise, hats, stickers, mugs, polo shirts, long sleeve shirts, hoodies, because fall is coming. Fall is coming, so pick up a hoodie, pick up a long sleeve. We've got all kinds of good gear. And of course, we have our famous magic mugs. Which you can we drink said, winter, summer, spring, and fall. You you certainly can. And as I said, you can drink beer from these. And I have, by the way. And it's they work fantastically for beer. And they, they can you can drink uh, all kinds of warming things, too, if you want. But can I just say, I mean, can I just also add, we also have books. And this, this, uh, uh, um, this video has been about the kind of things that the EU can do to derail the project. And one of our books is about Brexit and how they try to derail Brexit. So you can learn all about that by going to our shop. And while you read one of those books, you can uh, uh, help yourself and refresh yourself and keep yourself vigorous by drinking tea. I'm drinking green tea at the moment from one of our magnificent 15 ounce porcelain, beautiful to hold, marvelously embellished. This one has our double-headed eagle, uh, one of our mar marvelous magic mugs. And you can do it, read the book, by also wearing marvelous shirts like this one, if you want to look cool and elegant and uh, 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 marvelous, as my wife tells me I look when I wear <laughs> shirts like this. And, you know, she's got a woman's eye for these kind of things, so she should know. And they're incredibly comfortable and they're 100% cotton. And as I said, they've got our own double-headed eagle there too. And um, help yourself by going to the Duran. We've got wonderful shirts, not just like this one. This is a marvelous uh, uh, long sleeve T-shirt. We've got polo shirts, we've got other kinds of T-shirts. We've got wonderful things. We've got mugs, we've got hats, we've got stickers. And we are expanding, we are thinking of new products all the time. And the feedback we are getting on our products has been marvelous. So help us, help the Duran, help yourself. Go to our shop, Alex will tell you how. Just click on the, just click, click on the link in the description box down below. 
we have a link for the Duran shop right there, the DuranShop.com. Alexander Mercurse, editor-in-chief of the Duran, thank you very much. Till next time, everybody, take care.